When I first lighted this uh, little fish and chips shop, there was some uh, interest in it. And um, I think Suzanne wanted me to uh, come up close and have a look at it. So you can see in there's a row of lights on the right in the right window. And straight ahead, you can see somebody standing there. And um, over in the left window, well, it's hard to make it out, but there's a, there's a guy standing there at the counter. I've got a picture that clearly shows it. Here it is, if you haven't seen it. And um, I had a lot of fun lighting this. It was, uh, it took a little while because I did the upstairs too. I put some old dilapidated curtains up there as if it hadn't really been uh, occupied for quite a long time. You turn the lights out, sometimes that allows the camera to see in better, especially interiors. And you can see upstairs, it's uh, the curtains are kind of trashed and uh, disrepair. But obviously it's a very popular shop. There's two couples on their way in there. They, I don't think they arrive together. I don't think they know each other. But um, they're headed in there for a little, little dinner, perhaps. I'll turn the lights back on and be right back. Other things I've been doing. Well, I built three trees here recently. That was an attempt at a kind of a beech tree type structure. Not really sure how well I did, but uh, it's still a nice tree, whether it looks like a beech tree or not. And it, uh, it fits in very well right there. Um, the other tree, which is pretty fun, is this one over here. This was an attempt at a Scots pine. Hard to see it. Right there. And uh, we had a, a poll on the community page of Farland Howe, and uh, people wanted to see it over here on the, on the bridge approach. So if you were coming along the train, you would see it like that as you passed. It's, uh, it turned out pretty nice. I'm very happy with it. We'll go look at it from the other side too. I'll be right back. Here from the other side, over against the wall. Looks pretty good over here too. Then the third tree was uh, intended to be an oak. And it is right over there. So I'm going to go back around to the other side. I'll be right back. Looks pretty good over here too. When I was in Cornwall, a couple, three, I don't know, maybe four years ago now, I saw this pylon, power wire transmission, high voltage pylon, tower. We would call them towers. And I was intrigued with it at the time. And I got to thinking about it here recently. And I thought, well, it'd be fun to build one of those. And what triggered it was I, I leveled up my other high, high, uh, 
high tension, high voltage towers, and I realized I needed a fourth. So I decided to build one of these. And uh, I took this drawing and I uh, translated it into what I think is about scale. So perhaps you can see that a little bit better now. Anyway, that's my rendition of this. And I got on Google Street View and I started because I didn't take a picture of it when I was over there. I got on Google Street View and I started searching because I knew approximately the area that I'd seen it in. I started searching on Street View and came across it and I took this, this is a screenshot off uh, Street View. I did discover another style that's very nearly the same as this, but not quite the same. I can't show you that picture because it's copyrighted. So it's not finished yet, but here's where I am so far. I ran out of plastic, plastic angle. The feet are made out of balsa wood and sanded and painted. I have not painted the tower yet because it's not completed yet. I'm trying out these insulators. I, I'm not really pleased with them. Um, I think they're a little clunky, but they may have to do for now anyway. The ones over here on this tower are much more delicate. This is actually an HO, it's a Walther's kit, um, HO scale. So, you know, if it was, if it was double O, it'd probably be this tall or thereabouts. But many things are similar. In fact, the upper section, the uh, engineering is about the same. The way they've uh, connected the cross arms at panel points in the structure. I guess this one might be easier to see. But these have never really been straight. Plumb, I guess I should say. And the other day I decided to plumb them. So when I worked on that and actually found a permanent home for them, which they've never had until now, I realized I was really missing one and it needed to go over there. So that's what I'm doing, I'm working on that. I kind of wish these were double O scale, but what can you do? I could build three more of these, but uh, I don't know if I want to do that or not. It won't look quite as big once it's painted gray once it's uh, painted gray and weathered a little bit. Okay, so that's one other thing I've been working on. Building a, a tower, power tower, tower, power pylon. One other thing I've been doing is I, I had a rake of uh, coaches, some of which had lights and some of which did not. And I wanted them all to have lights. So we'll go over here. 
why it's just about time to flip my BNSF catalog uh, calendar over to December. Nice. Uh, I don't know. Is that an SD40? I'm not really sure. Or is it an AC44? Not. Can't really tell. I guess it says. Mills, Texas. Doesn't say what kind of locomotive. I guess we could look it up with the numbers. They're kind of blurry. Maybe not. Okay. Back to the train with lights. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will run this train and um, we can watch it. And I'll turn the lights down and we can watch it uh, run past. That's the best way to see it anyway, so I'll be right back. In order to get those in there, what I used was I, I put the, just like in my DCC video of putting the flashing lights, I used illuminated models and I got their bridge rectifiers. Very inexpensive. They come five to a pack. And I added a, um, a capacitor. Now you can you can uh, solder the capacitor between the plus and minus output side, the load side, as long as you get the plus and minus correct, it'll work, and it'll take the flickering out. So you just get a capacitor, say. Uh, a 15 volt or 16 volt uh, 2200 uh, microfarad that's UF for micro and you just solder those leads the the capacitor has a long and a short wire the long one is plus the short one is minus just like an LED and you just solder them to the uh, the load connection where it says plus minus on these It doesn't really matter. It's just that there's a plus and a minus on the load side. You just need to get that capacitor on there straight. There's no fancy, um, you know, super secret to how you do it. You want to make sure it's on the DC side. DCC is, well, it's not AC, but it, it alternates. It's... Um, there are digital signals flowing down it and uh, so the current reverses the plus and the minus keeps switching back and forth depending on the communications it's uh, trying to send or yeah send through the system and you can't put the capacitor on that side you have to put it on the load side and a bridge rectifier to, uh, to refresh a bridge rectifier just changes from AC to uh, to DC. So it changes from AC to what the LEDs want, which is DC. And I did put a, uh, I used a, just a regular uh, LED strips. Not those, those are 5 volts, but I used 12 volt DC strips. And I used a 3000 ohm resistor on it. 
between this and the lighting. And I put the capacitor directly to the, um, the little bridge rectifier that comes with it. So, uh, let's run some trains and uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, how about subscribing? And if you like the video, how about a thumbs up? Thanks. See you soon. Bye for now. To the trains.